What's good, what's good, what's good? Good evening, everyone. My name is Ivy Soul, and I would like to welcome you to the Candid Film Festival. Woo! Um, if you guys have been following the film festival's journey, you know that we were hoping to have it back in September at Herbert Von King in Brooklyn, New York, in best Eye, but a combination of COVID and <laughs> weather just would not allow for that to happen. So I'm so, so grateful to all the work that has been done in order to make this possible virtually. I'm really, really appreciative of everybody tapping in. I'm seeing folks from South Carolina, seeing some Baltimore heads, seeing a whole bunch of people. And uh, I couldn't be happier with um, what we're about to present. So as you know, my sophomore studio album, Candid, is dropping next Wednesday, February the 2nd. 2022 at 2:22 a.m. Um, and yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm really excited for y'all to be able to hear what the past three or four years have been building to. And I figure, what better way to celebrate an album that really focuses in on storytelling, uh, like like my past albums, but this this story is a little bit more special to me. And um, what better way to celebrate that than to bring together some filmmakers? Um, I think musicians and filmmakers have a lot in common. We like to use imagery and uh, sound to convey uh, deep messages, shallow messages, messages about love, about family, about fear, and about vulnerability. And uh, yeah, each of these filmmakers do just that. The first person we have up is Aisha Ford, um, and she is going to introduce herself. So thank you so much to everyone for being here. I hope you enjoy. My name is Aisha Ford, uh, she, her. I am a writer director and I am based in New York. I'm from Dayton and I uh, attended Rice State University where I majored in film production. Well, I wanted to be like a production designer. My mentor, she started working there at Rice State and I didn't know if I wanted to actually be like a director. Then she said, hey, you made a great script. You should actually try to go and direct it. And I'm like, no, cause I don't want to be a director. But once she kept nagging me, I'm kind of like that person that has a wall up. So I'm kind of push people away and it's like, that's and um, so she kept uh, persuading me and saying, hey, you're really, you're really good. You should just try to take this chance. And I'm like, okay, yes, I should do it. So that was the, like the first time I did a, a, a directing role. And um, ever since then, I didn't want to go back. Uh, the things that I find myself coming back to is uh, coming of age stories. Um, you can say all of my work is like a masterful exploration of black girlhood. And the um, majority of it is based on my um, childhood influences. The messages I want to portray is self-worth and loving yourself and standing in your own power. I, I want to see a kid's perspective, especially a Black girl's perspective on how they view the world and how, they, uh, uh, how, how, how they're exploring each, each, each direction or reaction or decision they make. Hey, my name is Aisha. And I am originally from Dayton, Ohio, and you are about to watch my film, Be a Fish.
one, two, three. Today's the big day. No, we have four more days. Five minutes. But you told me next week. Be downstairs in five minutes. What are you wearing? Mom, I'm not ready. You told me next week. Come on. Taylor, I do not have all day. It's okay. We've done this before. you put all that stuff up.
Guinness, uh, based in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I'm a director, producer, screenwriter, or director, producer, writer. Um, pronouns he, him. Um, yeah, from the world. <laughs> Not a specific place on the map. <laughs> Directing since 2016, like, yeah, it's so about five years or so. Always had a love for, I guess, creative arts or at least the idea of expression um, and sitting down and listening to mom and dad stories and just was so intrigued by how different their experiences happened to have been. And they've always like, would show me photos and the limited amount of photos that they had. And from that, I think I fell into a love of photography of wondering what the frame before and after was. And I think the medium of film introduced me to another language that can kind of excavate within. So definitely stumbled upon it. Um, and it wasn't like, I'm not a film school kid. And uh, it, it, it was a medium in which I kind of found that could speak to the deepest parts of, I guess, the human experience. I got introduced to advertising through a good friend of my sister's actually. Um, and I did this internship program called MAPE, Multicultural Advertising Internship Program. Um, I got landed at Saatchi and Saatchi. Uh, I met my directing partner there, Pat Haywood. I got to a point of just advertising is what it is. And I was like, it has to be something a little bit deeper and a little bit more meaningful. And um, left advertising, started to do like more treatment work at production companies and then writing and directing our own stuff. Yeah, so Gramercy is this, if anything, a human, a human study on both the inner and outer lives of a young man who comes back home and has to reckon with things that he's been putting off. And um, it's, it's kind of examining the duality of both. You can be one thing while also being the other. I think sometimes within this life, we, like if I deem somebody as a nice person, or if I deem them as a person who's calm, the moment they don't act that way, we say they're out of character or they're not that. And, oh, you seem like a different person. And I think that's such a limiting statement within the idea of being human. Um, and I think this film really explores the idea of he's going through depression in his life. And yet I think what we tend to think is depression is just a constant 24 seven idea, which it can be. But within that, there's just levity of life and you can laugh and you can have your friends and you can have all of these things. And I think the film is really trying to point at one thing could just never be the absolute of that idea. Like things aren't just ones and zeros. Um, things aren't so binary. Things aren't just black and white and life exists between the gray. I like to call it a, it's a little bit of a memory scape because you don't know, um, not too many things make the most sense, but I think that they ask the most questions. So hopefully you have a whole bunch of questions when you don't. So.
yo, K Ron, it's Shaq. Found me back in Gramercy for a few days, bruh. Started looking through a bunch of old photos I found as one of all of us in the cafeteria in Quibble Town. Look young yourself. It's been a while, man. Hit me back when you get this. I'm not with all this shaky shit, bro. What are you talking about you don't want to come? Shaky shit? Yeah, you acting like you don't want to come. What, you too good to be with the guys now? Like, what's up? Nah, it's not even like that. Not even like that, bro. I'm tired, son. Tired from what, bro? What can you possibly be tired from? You ain't out here busting no sweats. You got no little one. Oh, you know I've been traveling all day. I got shit to do at the crib. I got to. Wash dishes, I gotta dust the blinds. What? <laughs> bro, you Tired, know you on bro. some bullshit. You on some straight bullshit. I need you there, bro. No if, ands, or buts, bro. You there. I'll see you later. I got the biddies, I got the bottles. My clear joints? My clear joints? Yes, sir. You already know. I know who you like, too. I'll make sure she there for you. Big Curly. Big Curly. Oh, yes, right. sir. Yes, Damn. sir. Nah, That's you right. bet. Man, go get her though. Elana, hold on. Dad head ass. Look, bro. Only wear dad hats. Listen, Fuck bro. Here. You need to get your you need to get your mane together, and I'll see you later. You heard? Fuck out of here. All right, bro. All right, G. Elana. Come here, Elana. His aunties. Oh, my auntie. All right, Chad. No. His, his, his auntie, his auntie just one. graduated from uh, kindergarten. What she was wearing? She was wearing size 13 Jordans. Oh, that's two. You know what? She size like, 13? She looked like Lisa Leslie. Chad, now I'm on you. Fuck out of here. <laughs> you look like your stylist look like she been the auntie wilding in your mitt right now. Bro, I'm my head ass. 
fuck out of here. Bring it back. Don't you walk too far. Fuck oh, out of here. I'm on that. You better stop. You look like you need to be on the Vegas Strip. Fuck out of here. I'm oh, on you, boy. You better stop. You got fuck out of here. I can't hear you. you I don't give a fuck. You got more strength than my lesbian on Chad. You look like the beach. You got to put this man in the You look like the beach. You look like the You look like the beach. You look like the Hey, yo, y'all good? Tell me he don't look like Whoopi. I told him he got three, I gave him his three, and I killed his shit. Oh, we getting a flick? Hold on, baby. Don't be Goldberg in the face. Hey, he was like, what are you doing? You already know. What's up, bitch? Oh, hold up. I don't know you were in that yet. I saw both back. Oh, this nigga's just watching. That's why I had to get that back. It was good, though. Hey, I'm bringing Reggie's for you. Oh, you already know what's up, boy. Reggie's for you. Text with you. Where? I didn't even see that shit. I ain't gonna hold you, bro. You read it though. Shit, I ain't even pee, bro. I ain't even gonna hold you, son. I ain't. You straight though, right? Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm good. You know. Back home. Feel good. How's your family though? Yo, what up, bro? Through, man. What's up with you, bro? Man, you know, right here, sis. What's the vibe, bro? Y'all good? Yeah, we straight, bro. What's up? You sure? Yeah, bro. That's my boy. Right, right, right. Yeah, what's up with you? What's up, bro? Shit, man. Ain't done. All right. Hope so, bro. Yeah, I don't know that, bro. Fernando and Lobos. Here we go, Lobos. No more riding the stolos. Bumpin' that shit, man, I'm just tryna get your table I'm tryna get this table I'm still out and dirty I'm with you from Jersey Sippin' on some wedding cake, I've been ballin' on I'm tryna celebrate How do I make bring the rose, eh? Come take this ride Oh, it's the Jersey Drive Drop the top and go
but he couldn't get it started. He said his problems with the transmission. It's going to cost a lot of money to replace it. So I'm going to give Bruce a call. He's going to come and tow it out today. You know, I'm sorry. I know you you really like the car. It meant a lot to you. But, uh, hey, man, we can find another one. Um, and we'll be back in Jersey around 10 o'clock on Sunday. Good to have you home again, all right? Talk to you then. Yo, real talk, what though. you what you want from me? Yo, real talk tell though. Me, tell me what you. Nah, nah, bro. Now that I think about it, bro, where you been at the past six months? Dead ass. Where you been at the past six months? What you mean? I've been right here. No, no, no. I'm not talking about I'm, right I'm now. I'm right here, right with no, you right now. I'm not talking about right now, Shaq. I'm talking about it's been six months since my brother been dead, and and I ain't hear from you, bro. You ain't check up on me. You ain't call me. None of that shit, bro. That's how I know you gassing. Man. What are you talking about? I came, by your, I came by your crib after. Shag, I'm after not the party. talking about today, bro. I'm not talking about and now. I, and I'll I'm text talking you, I'll about text the past tonight. six months. Yo, my, check your phone, bro. Stop bro. touching my pockets, bro. Oh, man, it's been six months since my brother been dead, Shaq. Six months, bro. And you ain't even hit me up, my nigga. When your sister died, I was there for you every day, bro. Every day, bro. Cause, cause you my man's, bro. You my nigga, so I'm gonna be there for you, as I should. But you gonna go ghost on me? That shit is mad foul, bro. That shit is mad foul, bro. I wouldn't do that shit to you, bro. That's fucked up. Stop acting like Tone is another dead nigga, bro. That's my twin brother, Shaq. My twin brother, my nigga. Damn, you can't get that shit? I got a tweak on you so you can get it? God damn, bro. What the fuck is wrong with you? I'm sorry, bruh. Bro, sorry is not enough, bro. It's been six months, my nigga. I gotta wake up every you know, day, you know, bro. You know what I've been going through that, in that six months? A lot of crazy shit. I know I fucked up. I'm fucked up. I've been, I've been fucked up since it happened. I ain't feeling that shit, bro. I ain't, I ain't feeling that shit, bro. I, I when I seen you at the party yesterday, I didn't see you, I seen Tone. She's been going through my head constantly, constantly. I can't stop thinking about it. Like, I feel like I'm losing my mind. This is, this is crazy, my nigga. Like, he not here. I gotta wake up every day. He not even here, bro. That shit made me feel crazy, my nigga. You saying you losing your mind? I'm losing my fucking mind too, bro. But we're gonna be all right, though, my nigga. It's facts. We're gonna be all right, bro. Just... I've known Rivers. 
I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood in human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo and it allowed me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans. And I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. I've known rivers. Ancient, dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers.
Yo, yo, yo. Wow. Um, as you can see, these stories are not only phenomenally written, they're phenomenally acted, they're phenomenally produced, phenomenally directed. And um, wow, I'm just, I'm overjoyed that y'all are enjoying it so much. Uh, me and my team have been working tirelessly <laughs> to get this out to y'all. So it's, it's a, I feel really, really blessed to be able to share this, share this, these, these stories and these films with y'all. We are actually going to take a five minute intermission just so people can stretch their legs, get some snacks, uh, handle any business that you got. Um, I did want to hit the chat really quick to see if anyone had any questions for me um, that I can answer now or answer later. Um, and also to say that if you um, want to support any of these filmmakers, feel free to Venmo me at Ivy-Soul or cash at me at money sign Ivy Soul. Um, and all of the proceeds will be split evenly among the uh, filmmakers that you're seeing. Um, so like I said, we got maybe like two or three miss minutes for a um, question. Any questions? I'm not really seeing anything. If not, we can go ahead and hit the intermission. And then we have three more films for y'all and then a couple surprises at the end. So make sure you stay tuned.
hello, hello. I am, wow. Uh, those two films, two of my favorites that we're showing tonight. Um, shout out to everyone who has been oh so generous in, <laughs> in uh, the Venmos and the cash apps. We're actually at $345 in a matter of minutes. Um, I am sure the filmmakers are definitely going to appreciate uh, uh, y'all's contributions to their work and to their livelihoods. As you know, it has been unbelievably difficult to be uh, a person during the pandemic, let alone being an artist or a working person. So, um, wow, I, I really, really appreciate y'all's y'all's generosity. I will 100% make sure that it makes it to the hands of the folks who really made this possible, right? Um, this is just a platform. Um, I, I like to think of myself less as like the, the central figure in, in my career, more so as a, I'd rather think of myself as a bridge for other artists and artisans to be able to show their work as well. That being said, the next filmmaker we have uh, popping up is a dear friend of mine, a wonderful human, a nutty ass Pisces, uh, it's Keith Charles, uh, and yeah, Keith uh, needs no introduction, but the one that he gives himself. Um, um, my brother in music and in motion picture, Keith Charles. Hi, I'm Keith Charles. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. Um, I, I identify as a nigga. So if you can't say it, don't identify me. I am not here. Because a lot of times when people ask me, like, how are you? Like, I'm black, bro. Like, I'm just out here trying to make what I can with what I have. So that comes in different mediums, depending on how I'm feeling that day. I do a lot based on like what is necessary for me to get from like point A to point B, whether that be like modeling, photo or something visual. That's normally what dictates my decision making. My earliest memory um, creatively is with music. Um, I have one exact memory that is like so crazy. And it was the first time I ever heard my voice, my own voice. Um, both of my parents are musicians. My mom had like this huge cabinet uh, with like crazy it was like the craziest music setup like now looking back I, I didn't know what it was then it was just like this you know that glass cabinet everybody got um but it was like the dub tape machine so it's like you know you can record from radio to tape and then it was the second tape uh deck where you would record whatever you're putting over that into this tape. And so my mom would like hook up a microphone to this and then like, you could like hear yourself over whatever was playing on the radio or if she had it running through like a four track. So I say something and I hear my voice for the first time. And that is always imprinted into my memory. The piece I will be showing is called A Slow Kind of Sadness. A Slow Kind of Sadness originally uh, was a part of, I believe, this eight week program um, led by an artist named Rhea Dillon by Cassandra Press, a visual essay that's what the class was on, creating visual, is about the pain and performance and the performance of pain. It's a window into how we reconcile 
what we've had to do and we continually have to do to navigate life in this new world as a people, as a person who is in outward facing industries. Now in the 21st century, just are being whittled down into personal brands. And, you know, what's made up for that? Because, you know, like, out of that comes such great things and great opportunities, but not all of the opportunity is extended to all of us. That's what the slow kind of set is about, is the acknowledgement that it's not all of us. But yet, it's the I and, and wherever you are in that spectrum. A moment of my life is made into a TV pilot. All right. We had a party. Nigga walk in, drain up, you feel me? Having a good ass time. Somebody making a toast. I ain't have a champagne glass in my hand. Uh, so I'm maneuvering through the kitchen to try to get it. And I'm pouring myself up. And right when I pour myself up, I dropped the whole champagne. So now everybody look at me while they were trying to give the toast. And I'm like, keep toasting, motherfucker. Like, uh, let me get some paper towels. So now I'm doing my paper towels while everybody doing the toast. That's pretty much of the pilot. Art, if it's good, continues creating itself. You know I mean, you've done your part as the creator. And if it's any good, it's, it's not just what you said. It's not just what you built. It's now in conversation with the world that you created it. Way back in the warehouse days of glory, we used to party till the break of dawn. Those happy days still remain in my mind. Look at them flames lighting up the sky. Ain't never seen fire shooting up so high. Look at them flames lighting up the sky. Look at them flames lighting up the sky. I ain't never seen fire shooting up so high. Are you listening, people, to what I'm saying? Because it sure looks to me like them niggas ain't playing. Them niggas ain't playing. Them niggas ain't playing. Them niggas ain't playing. Ever since they passed them civil rights, those fires have been lighting up the nights. And they say they ain't gonna stop till we all have equal rights. Looks to me like them niggas ain't playing. Them niggas ain't playing. Them niggas ain't playing. Them niggas ain't playing. Looks like they developed a new black pride. It even showing the way they now stride. You better look around, y'all. Can't you see what I'm saying? Show looks to me like them niggas ain't playing. Them niggas ain't playing. They show sure ain't. They show sure ain't playing. I think that we must begin to develop number one, and this is the most important thing we can do as a people. We must first develop an undying love for our people. Trying to get something started. Oh yeah. I'm talking about Snick and us and the Black Panther Party. Yeah. Is anyone listening to what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Cause it sure looks to me like them niggas ain't playing. Them niggas ain't playing. Them niggas ain't playing. Them niggas ain't playing. In Louisiana and Mississippi may end up being the most tragic loss of all. George Bush doesn't care about black people. Please. 18 billion so far as the claim of damage done by looting and flame. Excuse me, can I ask you a question? Sure. Who did you exploit today? Yet look around, ain't nothing changed. Nothing's damn changed. Thing. I sure hope somebody is listening to what I'm saying. Cause it sure looks to me like them niggas ain't playing. Them niggas ain't playing. Them niggas ain't playing. Them niggas yo. sure ain't playing. You know me? Huh? You know me? Yes. You love me? You know me? Yes. You know me? Yes. You know me? Yes. You know me? Yes. You know me? The bigots and the birches, they just can't see. This now black generation is gonna be free. Just you try and stop them and for sure you see what I'm saying. Show sure looks to me like... Of course you can lie to me. And you will. If you love me and you're going off with Maddie someplace, you're lying to me. Because what the hell do I care about the truth? I care if you're there. What Billie Holiday say, hush now, don't explain. 
All right, I accept that. Of course. All of right, course I you lie to me, because I don't even want to care. What, what does the truth matter? And why are you going to be truthful with me when you lie to everybody else? You lied when you smiled at that cracker down the job, right? Lie to me, smile. Treat me the same way you would treat him. I can't treat you, you the way must. I treat him. You must. Them niggas ain't playing. Them niggas ain't playing. Them niggas ain't playing. Them niggas ain't playing. Now where the black man is going is anybody's guess. With his natural hair and his Afro dress. But you can believe one thing and forget the rest. We, we know, know for sure. sure. Them, them niggas, niggas ain't playing. And we ain't either. Get it straight and get the fuck up on my face, dog. I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm Cheyenne Sanchez born in the Bronx, um, currently based in Harlem. I direct, screenwrite. Yeah, that was my role on this project. My name is Morgan B. Powell. My pronouns are any. Um, I use they, she, and he. I am Bronx-born, but Brooklyn-based. And I'm a screenwriter, director, and producer. The work that um, I'm trying to produce myself, uh, it's definitely narrative stories of uh, Afrofuturists, uh, solutions to current day issues, whether that's comedy or fantasy or children's animation. I'm sort of like all over the place, but at the root of it all is uh, liberatory work and storytelling that sets us free. My writing began very early. I used to love chapter books, reading chapter books, so I thought I could write chapter books. And that, uh, then I used to just fill my composition notebooks so fast with just me writing. My ideas would be so crazy. And I remember trying to share them with my grandma and she didn't care about them, but my brother did. And he was like, these are stories. Like you can like make a movie. And I was like, ooh, make a movie. And I didn't, I did, obviously at that age, I didn't think a movie was realistic for me or whatever. But you know, as I got older, YouTube became a thing. And then I started seeing like, wow, video concepts. And my brother also, just introducing me to short film. And so then I started writing scripts. Um, I've like always been a cinephile, just like as a small person, that was my favorite form of media. Um, like all genres, just super obsessed. And uh, I didn't realize that it was something that I needed to belong to and contribute to until really late in my life. Honestly, I'm kind of a late bloomer. Uh, with joining the industry, but um, I'm super grateful to have gotten here by sort of releasing the whole uh, nine to five desk job structure uh, or lifestyle. Um, I realized like it just wasn't for me when I was really bad at it. And I was like, what am I really good at? I am passionate about storytelling through cinema and I'm a great writer. So that's how I got here. My interest grew definitely from inspiration from my brother as an actor and then he developed, he progressed and turned into a director and watching the whole process come together, I was so fantasized by the community that you get from production. So We The Collective came together from Kevin's idea really, he wanted to talk about the transition with all the artists that, or yeah, just all the artists that we knew before COVID had happened and then how they transitioned on social media to a lot of these collectives or a lot of these groups or even individuals who just transformed their whole lifestyle onto this platform and were still able to connect, still able to find community, still able to motivate those at home to still do something in the midst of this quarantine, in the midst of this very real pandemic. Kevin, Kevin is our executive producer for Movie Collective. Uh, so yes, it was definitely born out of his curiosity of the care work and the inherent political nature of uh, black and brown, uh, queer and trans nightlife scene and artistic communities and collectives. You know, we came in with sort of this larger idea or question of like, what 
was it like before the pandemic um, and before the 2020 uprisings against police and prisons? Uh, and what has it been since then? Uh, how has it transformed? I think personal truth for me is like um, also a form of just being self-aware of yourself. <laughs> That's redundant, but to be self-aware and to just be able to see the role that you play in your community and in, in your life and your relationships. And that is, the, is, that is the moment that I like to capture. I'm very much character based in my writing. I think that if you have this amazing character, you can tell an amazing story or you can have an amazing experience. You can have an amazing conversation. You gotta know the role that you play in that conversation. What, what your words mean, how your words make somebody feel. And so knowing that words are also that powerful. Yeah, like I'm so inclined to just make a story out of this experience. Personal truth is sort of like at the, the root of um, all of the stories that I try to tell. I, I want them to be as authentic as possible as a way of moving through uh, what we experience as marginalized people. Um, to dance with shame in the same way that we dance with um, joy and uh, healing work. Um, it's, it's important to just not deny yourself the honesty required to move through things. I think with Black, queer, and trans people, we're always setting the stage. We're always setting the blueprint of what's to come. And it just happens within our nature. Historically, life at night has always been sort of a conduit for freedom and liberation for Black and brown queer communities, specifically in New York. It's through that rich history that you see um, this idea of like the culture of care in, in black queer nightlife and how it's not just about the act of liberation and freedom, but also the act of taking care of each other. And that's a, something that's being, um, I think, repeated now with our current pandemic. While we're in this space family, we have to protect one another. We have to protect the folks that are here because this is their space, this is our space. If we cannot be safe here, what can we be safe? If we cannot live here, if we cannot be in our ancestral power, when we open it up, where can we be? Ourselves. We are proud to be trans women. We are proud to be black. We are proud to be black because we are a gift. We are a gift. We are a gift to this world. They don't deserve us. They don't deserve our power. They don't deserve our beauty. They don't deserve mm. our legacy. Mm. Our Waking up is activism. Mm. Choosing life is activism. Mm. Um, so often, so often, trans women have to put our lives on the line, but people don't understand that the circumstances are different for trans people on the front line. I'm black, so I wanted to make sure that I put black, queer, and trans on there. What was really important for me to put queer, really important for me to put trans as well as a cisgender person holding the space. For me to be like, okay, if you're a trans fan, you wanna come to this party, you don't got it, period, you on the list. For me to make sure that I thought, for me as a New Yorker, I'm like, one of the hardest things was getting on the train with a fly ass fit, getting harassed on the train. By the time you get to the party, you already like, oh. So I was like, okay, let me make sure that I have a couple hundred aside to make sure that femmes, specifically trans femmes, were able to get home after the party. I really don't know what nightlife is gonna become yet. I think we're all kind of like figuring out what, how are things gonna like, I guess, unravel. I know, I know it can't really go back to how it was. Um, Really don't know how long it will be like this. Because I'm tired of our, our poor little straggly coins supporting each other. Everybody's struggling like there's so I'm much wealth. Same twenty dollars. Right. Uh, there's so much wealth out here. So yeah, your neighbor wants to show up. In the words of Rihanna, tell them to pull up. Pull up with your pockets. Pull up with the Venmo. Pull up with the cash app because it don't make no sense for any of us to be fucking struggling with housing, struggling with our mental health because the therapist is too much. We gather, or the spaces that we gather in, also realizing that most of the spaces that we gather in, not all, but most of them are like white owned. So rethinking how we can bring like black and queer people into other spaces that aren't white owned. And I'm an older white woman, 
queens. I don't give a fuck. I want all of the white queens because we deserve all of the white queens without any expectations. I'm Imani Dennison. Uh, I'm a director DP based in Brooklyn, New York. She there, my pronouns. I've been directing and DPing for the past, I could say, five years now, I guess more seriously, but since college. So college is where I developed my love for images. When I first um, started directing and DPing, it began as like a class assignment. My professor let me create a documentary instead of doing like a 12 page paper. And I didn't really even know what documentary was. I just knew that I love images and that, you know, cinema was something that I was a little interested in. I didn't know much about it, but my professor actually pushed me to try something new. From there, I just like started believing in my ability to tell stories. I do come from a, uh, like a family of storytellers though. My yeah, uncle Ed is like the family historian. He's always taking images like floor to ceiling in my aunt's house. It's just like images of like the family for the past, like I don't know, over 30 years. That's where my love for just images in general started, like, you know, in real time. Well, I guess it, just in regards to like actually claiming it for myself and like, yeah, claiming it as something that I, I love as well and something that I find to be important. Um, it definitely in college and like just took a little affirmation from a black woman that told me like, hey, this is really good. You should like explore this a little more. So yeah, no Moss ended up coming almost out of nowhere. Um, at the time I was in uh, I was in South Africa in Johannesburg. This musician that I really love named Achilles Navarro, who is one of the composers for um, a band called Irreversible Entanglements. He hit me up one day asking me if I'd be interested in creating some content for a track that Irreversible Entanglements was working on. And yeah, I was just completely shocked and excited because these were all like really incredible musicians, like some of my favorites, all of them. They kind of gave me complete creative control to make some work. Yeah, I just started thinking about these concepts around free jazz and this music and the words of one of the musicians, uh, More Mother, who is featured on that track. And essentially, you know, the song's just about, it's not taking like any government bull, like bull, I can't, I don't know if I can cuss, but not, you know, just not taking any crap from like the government and also just like being liberated as black people and like coming together and like, yeah, being done with like the system as we know it. And yeah, I just started doing more and more research around just like black surrealism and um, black people in space and African space travel. And I was like, you know, let me just actually make some work around this. It, it all feels very aligned. And next thing you know, three or four days of filming all around South Africa, um, this concept and just like getting a group of friends together and going out and filming. A nerdy kid or just like a kid really attracted to science and always had like a really big imagination. Um, I think maybe coming from being like an only child for a long time, you know, your imagination just goes also from like Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah, I've been really obsessed with like science fiction and horror and just like Black, the Black imagination um, and how complex and beautiful it is. And just like, I don't know how, how we've been like, just like using our minds and our uh, and our creativity to kind of, uh, I, won't, I, don't, I won't say escape, but maybe it is like to kind of escape this like reality that we're in. As a black queer person from the South, <laughs> You, uh, I, I haven't always been, you know, as honest about like who I am, about my like wants and needs. It's a, it, it's, it used to be a bit skewed, but I think now as an adult uh, and somebody like completely, you know, independent, it's become something very dire, like honesty and truth and like walking in my purpose feels like dire. And I just remember like the opposite side of it, just like what living not in your truth feels like and, and, and looks like and 
it's just like not desirable. I just encourage other brown, queer, you know, just like feel truth in their body and like speak it and like, you know, stand strong in it. It definitely shows up too in my in my work, like the way I approach film, because uh, I only want to, yeah, I only kind of want to work on and with people who are like also in their truth and like stories that feel genuine.
concludes the you know short film portion of the evening i want to give uh my utmost gratitude to the six filmmakers that you know allowed us to screen their work um it's not something that i take lightly because i know from releasing music for the past six years almost seven years now that um every time you release something you're putting a piece of yourself out for public consumption. And that is one of the most difficult things to do. <laughs> so to Aisha Ford, to Cheyenne Sanchez, Morgan B. Powell, to Amani Dennison, Keith Charles, and Jamil T. McGinnis, my gratitude literally knows no end. Uh, for producing the hell out of this event, I want to give a shout out to Ethan Tomas, who has been you know, running all the sound and whatnot, uh, all of our, our production value. Um, <laughs> shout out to Francine Tamaclo for, you know, keeping me sane throughout the uh, production of, of this and also, you know, starring in a music video or two. Um, shout out to Yinka Fasan for, you know, being willing to work with someone that you didn't know very well, but over the past year or so, we got to know each other quite well, probably more than you wanted. Um, <laughs> and uh, Yinka is the one who is responsible for bringing all of these um, wonderful filmmakers together. Uh, we're actually gonna screen the Bamboo video, which is directed by me and DP'd by my homie, Jesse Bronstein, because I'm a director too, I'm a filmmaker as well. Um, and then we're going to play a song off the album, if that's cool with y'all. Uh, thanks again. Uh, so here's Bamboo, Performance Visualizer. Touch me. 
was too scared to say it. You were too scared to shout it. It wasn't news to us, but tell 'em read all about it. I wasn't scared to say it, but I was scared to shout it. We got a couple questions about bamboo um, in the chat, so I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to hit those before we um, before we do a little sneak peek of a song that's gonna be on the album next week. Uh, the first question is from Matthew. Shout out to Matt Seanfield of Not Nine Seven. Uh, that's the family. Uh, and the question is, can you talk about the process of getting into your director bag a little bit? Absolutely, much like um, my Sib Morgan, I, I've always thought of myself as a storyteller and a writer before any particular medium. And I think that 
being able to articulate certain stories via different mediums is something that I pride myself on as an artist. And yeah, it like the, the pandemic gave me an opportunity. I know that's kind of wild, but <laughs> it gave me an opportunity to think through the different mediums that I'm actually interested in. Um, and I've, I've also had some amazing teachers and collaborators in this time. Matt being one of them at, on the production side, Amanda Baraka as a director, Jesse Bronstein as a DP, Morgan B. Powell as a producer and a director, Imani Dennison as a director and a cinematographer. Um, yeah, so just being able to um, kind of explore what I was capable of uh, is kind of how I got into my director bag. And one of, one of the other things that I would say is that um, I, I think that it's a, a natural human reaction to hear something, hear a song, and see a visual accompaniment. It's like, if the song is good, <laughs> then generally uh, it feels like you, uh, the song is almost soundtracking a movie. Um, and one of the things that uh, myself and Ethan uh, love is making cinematic music. So yeah, it, it makes sense that if I'm writing cinematically that I would extend the writing to the actual visual component. So pretty much I just wanted to do it and I felt like I'd be decent at it. And I, I, I personally think that I edit my ass off um, the bamboo uh, video, all edited by me. Uh, One more night, edited primarily by me, but also Ethan is a, a fantastic partner in all areas of my creative career um, and my creative output. And the dangerous video, also co-edited by the two of us. And um, yeah, I just I, I think I don't know. <laughs> uh, try some shit and was, de was decent at it. Um, the other question that I saw in the chat uh, from Imani was, is this, was Bamboo shot on film? No, it was not. We were going to, but um, ended up just shooting it on the Ari Alexa Mini. Um, for those of you who don't know Ari, like the Alexas are like just chef's kiss. And Jesse's, um, Jesse's like, a phenomenal, phenomenal cinematographer. Um, so yeah, it was on the Ari, but I did ask the colorist um, whose name is uh, Gabe Sanchez to add a bit of grain, um, just so that I would give it a slight like textural feel like them. Um, yeah, but throughout this time, um, have been just learning that much like music, film is a truly collaborative space. Um, the director, the DP, the producer, the the gaffer, the like for me, like in a lot of these videos, my set designer has been the the goat. <laughs> Her name is Siesta. So yeah, um, just learning to kind of lean into the collaborative uh, elements of film, much like I lean into the collaboration that um, that helps make all my music possible. Because I I don't enjoy doing music alone. I don't enjoy doing creative endeavors alone for the most part. So um, yeah, again, thank y'all so much for joining us. We're about to play you one more thing. It's just a, a song called Chico off the album. And then I will leave y'all to y'all on Friday evening. But thank you again so much for tapping in.
If you really asking, I've been raising a bar. Chest pressed with your girl in the car. I've been running abroad. Hit the streets and I'm dodging the stars. Getting sun on my ease of the mark. Getting cash in the land of the tar hill. If you asking, I'm cooling in BK. Eating a cheesecake. Plotting on a junior perfect on my free say. Getting to the top like two pays. Ignoring the two shades of two dates. If you asking, then you probably shouldn't know. So if you yapping, I'ma show you to the flow. And if you craft a competition, you should reconsider rapping. I'm committed to the task of tagging toes. If you looking for me, you know where to find me. Probably plotting so the profits stay aligning. Got a passion for the craft and a passion for the bag. If you lacking and I'm cracking on your ass. I got one thing on my mind right now is not fame, not change. Stay sane, get paid, get paid. Stay sane, stay sane, get paid. Stay sane, get paid, get paid. I ain't tryna hear shit about shit. Let's just tap in. For rapping, my mama done made it. She gagging, no crashes. She stacking, she stacking that Amex is platinum. She annex the crib and gazebo, the back and placebo. My patience, I'm lethal and waiting. You keto and I don't know beef less than Kobe. I'm waggle, I'm waxing kinetic for poetry. I don't need more than you showing me. Go name a nigga as cold as me. Go find a fuck I need one to give. Go tame your tongue cause you talking that shit that I like. I go, baby, you see the bill. I got the dibs on the crown. I can air you out. Tryna cop the crib so the gentrifiers won't tear it down. I'm trying to live, but the capitalism has got me down. All that I know is the work and the work it might kill me. The plan I'ma carry out. I got one thing on my mind right now is not fame, not change. Stay sane, get paid, get paid. Stay sane, stay sane, get paid. Stay sane, get paid, get paid. I ain't tryna hear shit about shit. Let's just tap in on game. Stay sane, get paid, get paid. Stay sane, stay sane, get paid. Stay sane, get paid, get paid. Stay sane, stay sane, get paid, get paid, get paid. Stay sane. If you really asking, I've been raising a bar. Chest pressed with your girl in the car. I've been running abroad. Hit the streets and I'm dodging the stars. Getting sun on my ease of the mark. Getting cash in the land of the tar hill. If you asking, I'm cooling in BK. Eating a cheesecake. Blotting on a junior perfect on my free say. Getting to the top like two pays. Ignoring the two shades of two dates. If you asking, then you probably shouldn't know. So if you yapping, I'ma show you to the flow. And if you craft a competition, you should reconsider rapping. I'm committed to the task of tagging toes. If you looking for me, you know where to find me. Probably plotting so the profits stay aligning. Got a passion for the craft and a passion for the bag. If you lacking in I'm cracking on your ass. I got one thing on my mind right now is not fame, not change. Stay sane, get paid, get paid. Stay sane, stay sane, get paid. Stay sane, get paid, get paid. I ain't tryna hear shit about shit. Let's just tap in on game. Stay sane, get paid, get paid. Stay sane, stay sane, get paid. Stay sane. My reason for rapping, my mama done made it. She gagging, no crashes. She stacking, she stacking that Amex is platinum. She annex the crib and gazebo, the back and placebo. My patience, I'm lethal and waiting. You keto and I don't know beef less than Kobe. I'm waggle, I'm waxing kinetic for poetry. I don't need more than you showing me. Go name a nigga as cold as me. Go find a fuck I need one to give. Go tame your tongue cause you talking that shit that I like. I go, baby, you see the bill. I got the dibs on the crown. I can air you out. Tryna cop the crib so the gentrifiers won't tear it down. I'm trying to live, but the capitalism has got me down. All that I know is the work and the work it might kill me. The plan I'ma carry out. I got one thing on my mind right now is not fame, not change. Stay sane, get paid, get paid. Stay sane, stay sane, get paid. Stay sane, get paid, get paid. I ain't tryna hear shit about shit. Let's just tap in on game. Stay sane, get paid, get paid. Stay sane, stay sane, get paid. Stay sane, get paid, get paid. Stay sane, stay sane, get paid, get paid, get paid. Stay sane.
Yeah. 